Welcome to Be Aware to Be Prepared. My name is Debbie Boyce. I'm the Medical Reserve, non-Medical Reserve Coordinator of Rutland and Addison County, Vermont. We are a community within a community within a state within the United States of the Medical Reserve Corps. Medical Reserve Corps? What is the Medical Reserve Corps? The Medical Reserve Corps is an organization of trained individuals, trained in that they know common response teams, knowledge, verbiage. Should they get called onto a scene, should there be an incident? Pre the COVID, we always said, should an incident happen? There is an incident happening now. There is and has and daily call downs asking for the MRC and MRC help to help others in different capacities. Recently was yesterday, there was a call down from the state of Vermont asking for contact tracers. Did they have three days of time to be able to assist the state of Vermont with contact tracing? There's always a job. There's always something for you to do. Should you decide that something that you want to do, go on to the Department of Health website Type in MRC. It'll bring you up to the website and it'll give you a, a pull down. And that's where you will fill out basic information when the state of Vermont will contact you. They will ask you, what would you like to do? What are your already skills? Maybe you're a retired nurse, maybe you're a retired doctor. Maybe you're a truck driver. We need truck drivers. We need people with CDL licenses. We need secretaries. We need lots of people. So people, today is December. It's the month of December. If you're watching the show, maybe in the spring, we're doing it in December, but some of the stuff will still be prevalent. How many of you can remember what we've been talking about? Yes, I'm going to be wearing my mask the whole show. That is a guideline from the studio, so I am not infecting the whole room. I had a viewer say, why are you doing that? That's why. That's why we all, if we leave our home, need to wear a mask. This mask has a filter system inside that I can take out, throw this into the washing machine. I change the filter system. There are other type masks. People are handing out these type masks. This work very, very well, okay? But people, if it gets dirty and you're breathing it in, that's not good. Change them. Can't afford them. Go to a doctor's office, the hospital. A lot of people have masks that they're giving out. You can make your own. Another type of mask that a lot of people were wearing, and I wear this one also, it has an internal filter. This is the filter system that's screwed in with the valve. The difference between this one and the wannabes is this has a two-way valve filter system. So when I put it on and I breathe out, there is a filter protecting those that I'm breathing out towards or I'm talking. Then when I breathe in, there's another filter system. There was a time I had to wait and not wear this for a while because I couldn't get the filters. 
Go online. Be resourceful. Now, what do you do if you don't have a, th a mask like this or like this or even like this? How many people have a coffee pot with a filter that filters the coffee? It turns brown. It does its job. For people who are wearing, I don't think I can do it. Maybe I can. The turtleneck, the pull up over their, the tube that goes over their face. That's effective a little bit. People who are going like this, effective more. But in order to make this, whatever you put over your face, the turtleneck, the tube, it needs to have a filter in it. Make your own. Wear something. How can you avoid not having to wear a mask if you think it's a bunch of crap? It's a bunch, it's a hoax. There are people out there. Yes, there are people out there. I hope they don't get sick and I hope they're not making everybody else sick. But the numbers are going up and the numbers, the data is fact. It's not just us blowing words in the wind. People, be respectful of other people. If you're asked to stay six feet away, some people say stay a cow's length away, put your arm up and have the other person put their arm up, that's six feet away. Now, that's protecting here and going in. When you end up with thick mucus in your throat, and you breathe in, this was the same as virus, the, uh, the flu, we talked about this ad nauseum for years. Somebody sneeze and you go, <gasps> and you suck it in and there goes the germs and it goes into the warm host and it says, ha ha, I'm going to live and I'm going to grow and I'm going to make this person really sick and maybe I'll go down to the lungs, maybe I'll go to the bronchitis, maybe I'll make their joints tired. Don't give them that chance. Every day we all need to be drinking water. I ask this question every month. Can you remember the formula? Wow, I just found out that I'm 170 pounds, so that means I got to drink more water because I gained some weight over the COVID. You gotta, I've got to drink seven bottles of water. Seven bottles of water? No, I want coffee. Yeah, coffee. But for every cup of coffee, it's only a half a bottle of water because of the salt-based nature of the coffee. Think about it. Get your liquids. You can go ahead and get water through watermelon, all your melons, different types of foods. Think about and be creative. You too can do it. Now we're going out and about and we're walking. You can see I'm wearing a fluorescent vest. Okay, very important because we don't know when the sun is going to go down right now. You know, if you live up north like I do, the sun is not out that often. You still need a reflector vest. Especially, especially keep it in your car because if you break down, very capable of a possibility. Not your car breaking down. What happens if you slide off the road? What are you going to do? I know it's cold out. I know it's winter time throughout the whole United States. Different temperatures. I keep a blanket in my car. This blanket, we can 
snuggle up and yeah it's colorful yeah it's marble characters don't have a blanket you want to do go, go be creative so that your kids want to snuggle up with it okay i keep this in the back so it should i go off or even if I'm traveling, my passengers have something to cover up with. This is big enough to make a double layer or a triple layer for one person or to cover three people on one seat. So we do that. Okay, so we talked about the masks. So I'm going to put them aside. We're out and about. They make gloves, all different types of gloves. Have something on your hands because during this time we can talk about frostbite. What's frostbite? How do you know if you got frostbite? On the cheeks. That's one thing our masks are going to help do. But you got to protect your eyes. You might have to take a hat. It's going to be a hair day. Okay? You might have to pull it down if you're out and about. This, I don't think it's going to keep me warm. So I'm going to wear a scarf over it. Okay? Let's see what my hair does. Not too bad. Okay. All different types of hats, you decide. You know, when it's cold out and when Mother Nature is deciding if you are going to be a victim of, of frostbite, it doesn't matter what you look like. Okay? But feel good about what you look like. I like keeping these gloves in my car and, my, and I wear them around because they're thin. I also have a shirt that goes over my thumb so that it keeps part of my hand warm. But this also has a rough finish. Think about for Christmas not for just for Christmas, for birthdays, a just because kind of thing. If you need a pair of gloves, look for something that is going to be doable, waterproof, that you can also layer, that you're not going to be so hot. I just mentioned the L word, layer. I'm wearing one, two, three layers. And underneath my white is also another layer because I have a condition for arthritis that I need to do that. I take care of myself. I might get warm, so I take off a layer. Or I might take off another layer, or I put a fan on. But layer on, people, it's important to layer. Because if you sweat and sweat, and your inside gets wet, what's going to happen to your body, to your core? Did you say turn cold? Yes. What happens if you turn cold? Should you warm up? Do you answer yes? Yes. You should warm up. How can you warm up? Wrap yourself up in a nice warm blanket, okay? These also make portable hugs. Yeah, everybody's saying they're missing their hugs. Get a hug from a blanket or a big pillow. But I'm going to warm up. But if I've been drinking enough, I'm not going to get sick. I'm not, my chances of rebounding from dehydration, from being hypothermic, from being too cold, is going to be less and I'm going to not hurt my skin. Our skin needs water to maintain itself. How many people are saying, oh, I'm washing my hands so much? <gasps> washing hands? I said the W word, wash hands. How long should you wash your hands for? I'm giving you a lot of information really fast. 
You say sing happy birthday twice? That's or find some song that you can sit in there and wash your hands. Do an experiment. I just happened to start growing my nails out and I'm sort of like getting grossed out a little bit because they're showing dirt. And I got to thinking, hmm, if they're showing dirt about once an hour, should I be washing my hands more than once an hour? Like every half hour? These are breeding ground for germs. We cannot put our hands in our mouth like we used to. That's a good thing because when it, the flu is here and we go down the stairs and we go down with a handrail, you don't know whose snotty little hand was ahead of you. And then you go ahead and you wipe your mouth. There is a part of our face we got to keep away from people. Our eyes. Any open, wet part of our body is a doorway to infection. Hmm. How can you stop? You're not going to close your eyes all the time. Okay? If you need to wipe your eyes, you know, take a glass cloth and wipe it with a cloth. I'm going to do it with my sleeve. But what happens to my sleeve now? I've got some germ on it, possibly. How many people remember where we should sneeze? We sneeze in our, but we're sneezing in our mask. Yuck. I did that the other day. So I'm going to take my mask down. And what I did was, my voice just got louder because I'm out of it without my mask. I put a tissue in my mask like that. So when I was like this, it sort of like acts like a triple five layer filter. Okay. If I sneeze into that tissue, I can just reach in, pull that out, and my mask is still clean. Get creative, people. We're not going to tell you to go out and buy something special because you can make it from the stuff around your house. Okay, we talked about coffee filters. I think I even, some of you might remember, I talked about a vacuum cleaner filter. That's a real heavy-duty one. But for people who have got a nose who's running, put your tissue inside, okay? Hand sanitize. Hand sanitize. Come on. What, what can we do? It smells. You can get some that smell really, really nice. But the key is, I'm going to reach around here, because the key is, is finding stuff made with at least, this is 91% alcohol. This will kill almost anything. Um, the... You need it at least 70% alcohol. All of your disinfectants say 99% because it's got enough of whatever agent in here, there to kill it. The other thing is find what kind of soap you want. It comes in all of, uh, colors and flavors. This one's green. This was lime and citrus. This one is gold. And I know it smelled like orange, but really it didn't. You know, it's supposed to say, but it didn't. And it's a fancy name. But you know what? The name brands are not all up just because they're a name brand. If it says 99% effective, it's okay. And then everybody, this is a good thing to carry in the car, the wipes. How many people go through a drive-through? You think it's okay? Well, guess what? You gotta wipe down. 
you gotta wipe your hand, your uh, steering wheel. She goes that too. And then, what do we have in our hand all the time? We go ahead and touch something, we open up some, a door to a store, and then we take the phone out of our pocket. What about your phone? Have you disinfected your phone? You're going, what? No, no, don't put it in water. Don't spray it. Don't do that kind of stuff. Find the way that your phone company says to clean it. There's all different kinds of wipes. There's some in a white and brown bag. There's some in a green and white bag. There are some that are, have aloe in it. Find the one that works for you. Now the one things, two things that are in front of me that I haven't spoke about that we're going to start using more of because of the cold weather. Carry one of these in your pocket, in your, your car, people. Put in your glove compartment, have a couple of them. These make good secret Santa gifts if you're doing secret Santa. In my world, I think every month should be a special day. In my world, I believe there should be Christmas type uh, feeling of something happening every month. So Christmas around the, the, the year. Very important. This is heavy enough. If I have to knock somebody out, I can. They make them longer. This one is a short one. Hopefully I don't have to get to that point. But this is also very powerful in its brightness. How many people know what this is? Yes, this is my last year, so yes, it is a little scratched up. Uh, this is a telescoping one, so I can go ahead and expand it. Oh, I even got the dirt from the last year. Um, have that handy. Me, I have to have at least two of them because I'm always misplacing one. So I always have two. But then there's some time when I might have sat it down on the ground when I left the house and I ended up coming out of a, out of a place, out of work, place of work, and the car is covered. You can take your glove, because this is rubber on the outside, you know, you can wipe it, get the snow off. But what about the ice? You can start the car and let it heat up. But then there's some of us who have to say, oh, wait a minute, that's going to burn gas. We don't want that. So you can always take, my grandparents used to talk about, they used to take a card, an old card, and they would always keep something in her pocket. You can always find that and scrape if you have to. But we are now in a time in a place where we're not supposed to really go out and about. Think of your house as your vacation. This is your island with all the amenities and everything. Instead of going away to a camp, you're going away to your home. It's a vacation in your home. Time to spend time with your family. If you're by yourself, Zoom, talk. Somehow, communicate. And that brings me to the fact that if you know you have a neighbor who's living by themselves, check on them. Knock on their door and then stand back and say, hey, are you okay? Check on them. Check on your neighbors, please. It's very important to check on each other. Not only for just to make sure they're um, healthy and everything else, but maybe they might need something from a store. A store? Wait a minute, you told me to stay home. You can get delivery. And there's not a lot of charges for getting delivery. Or if you know of a neighbor who's going to a store, they would be more than happy to pick up your stuff, put the bag on your porch, 
knock on the door and leave. Think, think out of your box. You are very smart people and you too can do it. But it's gonna take all of us working together, preventing the germs from coming out and about. There's just a certain amount of disinfecting that people can do with ionizers and everything else running. How many people are worried? A huge amount, but then there's some who say, We've got to just help those people so that they don't get to get sick. There's a huge amount of people who have lost people. There's a lot of deaths that have happened. Be sensitive to those people. Be sensitive to your neighbors if they have lost one of their family members to this COVID. And if it's not because, oh, they say because of their age, they were sick before. No, we didn't need to give them COVID. So it shortened their life. No one deserves. If you deserve to be on this earth, so does everybody else. We all deserve to be here. Next month, I'm gonna talk about, I'll bring my little kit that we put in the car should we're traveling. I'm also going to do a to-go bag from the, uh, from the house. Some people are losing electricity. What are you going to do if you lose your electricity? Do you have enough light? Whether it be through, the, you know, it's recommended through flashlights, not with candles, people, because it starts fires. Do you have a plan? We're gonna talk about a plan. In the meantime, I want you to think, and if you have any questions, please contact us through our website and I'll see if I can answer anything you have. My last pitch for if you'd like to volunteer with us with the MRC Non-Medical uh, Reserve Corps also, get in contact with the health department on the website or call them up in Burlington and they would put you in contact. There is a background check because we all need to be background checked and make sure that we are all up to date. We do receive basic training as far as incident command training and first aid and CPR. If you have some time make that move. If not, contact your area, your towns, they can help you. So they can help you find the way you can help everyone around. It's gonna take all of us to help everybody through a virtual hug, okay? And if you can give yourself a virtual hug, hug yourself, give yourself pressure, because that's what somebody else giving you a hug does. Give yourself pressure. Find out what works for you. I have found this mask works for me. I put an iron on it, iron on with an iron, and I decorated it. Decorate your mask so you're proud to wear your mask. I'm going to say bye for now until next month.